Jacoby Jones. So Jacoby Jones is a former NFL player, uh, and he passed away at 40 years old this weekend. So uh, he is a former pro bowler, and he's best known for his miracle high, or mile high miracle on his two touchdowns for the Ravens in, super, in a recent Super Bowl. So passed away at 40 years old. First, let me say this, man. To pass away at 40 years old is insane to me. Actually, it's not coming from where we come from, but we are so used to being in a space where we wasn't expected to be certain ages, so to grow older is a blessing. But let me just go ahead and keep y'all up to date, and then I'm going give, to give y'all my thoughts. Pro Bowler, former Super Bowl champion with the Baltimore Ravens, died overnight on Saturday in his Houston area home. According to multiple reports, Jones, who celebrated his birthday on July 11th, just turned 40. Cause of death is not immediately clear, so I'm going to keep you all up to date uh, throughout the week on what's happening with that. Uh, obviously, you're going to see all of the, the Instagram posts and the people that supposedly loved you and all of that. He was born in 1984. To think that he was born in 1984 and I was born in 1982 and he's already gone and he supposedly uh, he was a world-class athlete is crazy to me. Says the NFL Players Association released a statement Sunday afternoon on behalf of the Jones family confirming that Jones passed away peacefully, peacefully, hmm. peacefully at his home in New Orleans. So did he die in Houston or did he die in New Orleans? Let me see something. Conflicting reports. Died overnight Saturday. All right. We don't need the ads. Died overnight Saturday in his Houston area home. So... One report is saying, that's why they say multiple different reports, and we like to confirm and contrast. One report is saying that he died in his Houston area home. The NFL Players Association is saying that he passed away peacefully at his home in New Orleans. He was born and raised in New Orleans before attending Lane College in Tennessee. Uh, then the NFL uh, Players Association expressed sadness for the loss of the late receiver and said that the Jones family, including his mother and son, are together include, uh, at this time. So he was married. So this is a statement by the, uh, the NFLPA, the Players Association, says, we want to express our gratitude for all of the kind thoughts and support you have shown us during this challenging time. Your ongoing support and respecting our privacy means a lot to us. I guess this is his family. We are deeply saddened to share that Jacoby Jones Beloved former Ravens football player from New Orleans and proud graduate of historically black college has passed away at the age of 40. In a statement, the Jones family confirmed that Jacoby Jones passed, passed away peacefully at his home in New Orleans, not in Houston. Family including his mother, uh, his mother and his son, little Jacoby, are together and asking for your prayers, privacy, support as they navigate through this difficult time. Um, yeah, man. I think he played nine seasons, spent his first five seasons with the Houston Texans before signing with the, Ra signing with the Ravens in 2012. Uh, first team All-Pro heading to the Super Bowl, Ravens championship winning in 2012. Wow. Well, rest in peace to him. I hope that his family uh, finds some kind of, of peace within them. Hopefully, he, hopefully it wasn't anything bad. But we got to make sure that as men also, I want to add this in there, we got to make sure that us as men, that we go get checked up, that we go to the doctor, that we take care of ourselves, um, that we also, you know, place our health as a priority, maybe not the priority, but as a, a priority at the very least, especially for the people that are highly productive. So, you know, J Jacoby Jones, rest in peace. Hope everything goes well. Uh, in addition to that, uh, burglaries are on the rise in Los Angeles. Check it out. 10 residential burglaries are on the rise here in Los Angeles. Marie Burglars Michelle, are targeting Shirley, homes, not even caring that the residents are inside. Some new data shows that crimes like this are heading in the wrong direction. Chris Wolf has more now from Larchmont Village. Home burglaries are on the rise in Los Angeles. The unsettling trend is coming into focus with new statistics and information from the LAPD. Officials say the jump in burglaries is led by the LAPD's Wilshire Division, which includes Larchmont Village, Fairfax, Hancock Park, 
Melrose, Miracle Mile, and Park La Brea, among several other communities. Wilshire has seen an increase of 86 additional residential burglaries in the first half of 2024, compared to this time period last year. Officers are dealing with organized crews and thieves using high-tech tools such as Wi-Fi jammers to disrupt home security systems. We spoke with one woman, Alex, who lives in the Larchmont area. She does not want to share her last name, but explains that she has security cameras inside and outside her home. Life here is overall great but I do have a ring camera. We had one installed because of all of the burglaries that have been happening. And I would say I get notifications every couple of hours of a porch pirate or somebody trying to steal packages or people entering gates and trying to open windows. LAPD Interim Chief Dominic Choi recently spoke to the police commission. Uh, year to date, our residential burglaries are up at 3.9% or plus 165 compared to 2023 and up 8.9% or plus 358 compared to 2022. Uh, residential burglars account for 56% of our total burglaries. This is a crime map covered in black and red markers showing burglaries in the LA city area. Jesus, Jesus, what is going on in LA? Good God, they just running amok in LA. They just running in y'all crib. They don't even care if y'all there no more. Don't care about no cameras, don't care about technology, none of that. Good God. And then the red ones is the ones where it's basically in the same neighborhood, at the same space, basically in the same house. And they just hit it more than one time. You can see one of them say 14, one of them say two, 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 two. I only see one, a bunch of twos, I don't see no 14s. Jesus. And they don't even care, it's happening. In, it ain't happening, actually, it's not even happening in the poor neighborhoods. It's happening in the neighborhoods. Well, I mean, is it even a poor neighborhood in Los Angeles at this point? Because all of the homes is like a million dollars or more. Good God. Why would anybody want to live over there, man? Why would it? Honestly, and I'm asking myself this question because I always look at stuff as an opportunity or I, I take into consideration the audience is watching the show. Why would anybody want to live in Los Angeles when this is happening? Listen. If y'all keep trying to sell me on the weather, I'm not going. I'm not going. If y'all keep trying to sell me on weather, oh, it's because of that West Coast weather. At the sacrifice of getting your home burglarized, at the sacrifice of your taxes, at the sacrifice of rampant homelessness, and you can't go nowhere, and Los Angeles just ain't, it ain't got the same cachet as it used to. It just don't have the same the same vibe as it used to. That's crazy. Area and surrounding communities in 2024. Clearly, this is not just an LA City problem. What else do you do to protect yourself? Uh, I have a camera inside my home as well, so I can kind of keep an eye on what's going on downstairs. We have bars on our windows upstairs. We have a. Hey, remember when bars on your windows used to be a ghetto thing? To have bars on your windows was a sign that you are in a crime-ridden, poverty-stricken neighborhood because you didn't want to get anything broken into. That was usually what was going on. If you seen certain elements and you were looking at real estate or you were driving through a particular neighborhood and you seen people that had bars on their windows, the bars on your windows were supposed to prevent the burglars and the people from being able to get in. It's the same thing when it comes to a bars on the door, right? Because in the better neighborhoods, you see big doors, big red doors, open windows. Sometimes they don't even put their shades down. It's just windows to look out and see everybody. You don't have that problem. Now, in the most prestigious neighborhoods in Los Angeles, they got to put and spend extra money to have big gates. And this is not to keep the burglars out. This is ultimately to slow the burglars down. Bars on your windows, cameras everywhere, because you basically got to police yourselves. You got to make sure that you protect yourselves. And so in the hood, we knew that it was going to be a slow response time or the police was always busy doing something else that, that took more priority or the police wasn't going to come and save you. And so it was bars on your windows, bars on your doors, all of that. And so the only thing that you had to worry about was getting carjacked before you actually got home <laughs> or somebody waiting in your bushes 
to set you up. You know what I'm saying? But once you was in the house, you had a little bit of peace because you had a lot of barriers to entry before the burglar got, or the people that was trying to get to you got to you. Now, this is happening everywhere inside of Los Angeles. So it's really messed up. It's messed up out there in these streets. Be careful if you live in Los Angeles because you might be a victim, not a victor. You know what I'm saying? And then last but not least, the Republican National Convention uh, is underway. Man, timing is crazy, ain't it? Check it out. Let's go back to John Carl. I understand you have a new statement from the RNC. Yeah, this is a joint statement from the Trump campaign and from the Republican National Committee, and we just got this in, so I'm going to be reading this to you for the first time uh, here on the air. A uh, statement from the Trump campaign and the RNC. As was communicated early, earlier this evening, President Trump is doing well and grateful to law enforcement and to first responders for their fast action. President Trump looks forward to joining you all in Milwaukee as we proceed with our convention to nominate him to serve as the 47th president of the United States. As our party's nominee, President Trump will continue to share his vision to make America great again. So the key line there is that President Trump looks forward to joining you here in Milwaukee to continue the plans for our convention. No, nothing, is, uh, nothing is changing here in terms of the convention going forward. In fact, uh, an individual I spoke to who has been involved in the planning here uh, said they were still working things out, but uh, predicted that the convention wouldn't just continue, but it will continue with a vengeance. I expect a, not just uh, all four days of this convention to, uh, uh, to take place, uh, but uh, it, it to be a very energized uh, convention and very much focused on uh, portraying Donald Trump as somebody who couldn't even be stopped by an attempted assassin. It's a great time to be a Republican. It is a phenomenal time to be a, a conservative, I think, right now. And I think that it goes in waves. Do I think that Republicans will continue to hold and then keep a strong hold on what's going on in politics right now? The Democrats has fumbled so bad and we know that the Democratic, Nas the Democratic National Convention that's going to be in Chicago after the Republican National Convention is going to be a opportunity for them to try to figure out how they can put out fires. What are we going to do? How are we going to do it? The Republican National Convention is basically an opportunity for them to celebrate and then continue to push forward. It's like one side is on the defense trying to hold back the troops and then the other side is basically leading the movement and they going forward. But the one thing that I know about people is that they fickle. And so once you get used to something for a specific amount of time, I think that we'll have Republicans in office probably for the next eight years. And then it's going to switch. It always switch somehow. Oh, man, we need more liberal policies and all of this. So it's going to switch. But right now, it's y'all time. It's our time. People that are more conservative, it's their time. And so the Republican National Convention, I wish I could be there. The problem with being, man. The problem with heading over to Milwaukee for the Republican National Convention is that I have some interviewees and some people flying into town because I'm shooting some exclusive content for the Patreon members. So bag chasers, look forward to this exclusive content. Content Actually, uh, one of the people that I got flying in this week is Christiana Hurt. So she's going to be teaching everything that she knows about e-commerce. Uh, we might do some content to where we release to the general public, but for the most part, uh, a lot of the exclusive content that I'm going to be bringing people in for is going to be just for the Patreon members, so we're working on some great things. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that is your Quick Hits.